As promised, I am back with Lexi and we're going to learn how to groom a mini American Shepherd. From giving the bath, right down to getting ready for the show ring, she covers it all in this jam-packed episode with Shapen as our fabulous model. A lot of breeders, a lot of handlers out there that don't believe in doing a whole lot of grooming. And to me, this is a dog show. We should be grooming. If we didn't want to groom, we should be doing a different discipline, in my opinion. Um, you asked and I listened. I have been filming a stockpile of more grooming episodes and they are filled with so many cool tips and techniques that can be used on a plethora of breeds. So comment below with what breed you'd like to see, like and share this video with your friends, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and then you can ring that little bell so you don't miss one episode. Yep, we're going to start with a bath. So pull out those shampoos and let's get to cleaning. She starts with Spectrum 1 diluted down with water using a specifically designed dilution bottle. Most companies have one. This one happens to be by Hydra. You look on the back of it, it tells you the dilution. Okay, 4 to 1 or 10 to 1. Yep. So you probably did a, looks like a 10 to 1 maybe? Yeah. Okay. As Lexi so eloquently phrased it, you will eventually figure out your own groove and mixture, creating the ideal amount of suds to get your dog clean. With the Spectrum One still in the coat, she then grabs the shimmering lights and adds it to all of the whites of the dog. Work it in really, really well into the coat. Let it sit there for a few minutes and then rinse it all out at the same time. Yes. A towel is necessary, but most definitely wring out as much water as you possibly can while they're still in the tub. It makes for drying a lot easier and yes, a lot faster. Of course, a nice sturdy shake or two or even three is always greatly appreciated before they find themselves on the table. It's time to pull out that got to be thickening mousse she mentioned in episode one. Now since we're technically going to do like show grooming on her, this bitch, she runs a lot and she is like one big muscle. So she is a little high in the rear because it, she has so much muscle back here and she's not as built up on the top line. So what I'll do is I'm gonna put some mousse in right here and get all of this, some texture and some building and she's also blowing her coat. So she might look a little bit different when we're done with this. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go in here and get it right where she's low and really you can run this through all of it if you have one that needs more it's not gonna hurt it it's all gonna matter how you actually go about blow drying them because their coat there are some dogs i have that even if you do blow dry them correctly and the right way they still get a wavy coat some dogs i've even had i specialed a dog for a year that I had to put um, like a keratin, keratin treatment in it to make it softer um, to get the curl out of it. Right. So it's all just kind of, you know, every dog is different. Just like people. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I can feel it. Yep. And now it's time for those dryer skills she was talking about. After initially blowing the sitting water off, what you want to do is blow the hair on the hocks and the feet in an upward direction. The key to a forest dryer is getting the coat dried down to the skin. In this case, we're going to take advantage of that mousse in the coat and blow the top line up as well. This is a perfect example of how a forest dryer is going to be your best friend for a multitude of reasons, especially with a bitch blowing her coat. Go ahead and pull out that Dremel tool. And just like many of us, she also uses a diamond tip, but hers I have linked below so you can get one for yourself. The main thing with the feet and getting their nails short is you want to be able to trim around their feet to make them look pretty and trim, I think. That's, that's my biggest thing is I like pretty little trim feet. I will trim these dogs every single day before I show them because I hate more than anything feet that look unkept. And I have a Dyna Groove, I believe that's what they're called on the end, so it doesn't get hot. Oh, okay. Or as hot, I should say. It's not as uncomfortable for them. Dyna Groove, I believe is what it's called. And you can see. You can get them from like Whitman's and any, a lot of places have them. You can either get the knockoff brand. These are like about $80, I think. Okay. Or you could get it 
a knockoff one on eBay somewhere. Okay. Once the nails have been dribbled, it's time to start trimming on the dog and she stays on the feet. So I'm gonna come in and I like to clean out the bottoms of her feet and her hair grows really fast. They're on biotin supplements and stuff like that. So, and just go in and sometimes you can even take clippers and I will do it on occasion to cl really clean out the feet. If you have a dog that keeps a lot of moisture in their feet or they kind of have yeasty feet, you're, you'll clean more out um, more than anything. And honestly, if you were to do that, you typically are gonna want a smaller scissor, um, a smaller straight sheared scissor. And what I do is I'm gonna go in and I typically will trim up to this pad right here okay. from the side. Okay. Okay, and you just want it even. And then same thing here, you're gonna wanna trim up to that pad Trim to the pad. Come in here and trim all this out and clean this all up. And once again, and I should have showed you guys, but and you'll see it is if you have long nails, you can't get as close. Right. As you can see, hers are pretty short. And you, I just go in here and clean all this up as well. The less hair on the bottom, the better. Less, even like pets at home. You want to make sure you keep that clean because it's less stuff they track in your house. If it's raining outside, then you can actually, they can bring in moisture on the bottom of their feet. Really, if you just clean it out and keep those clean, it's a lifesaver on a, a dog like this. Mm -hmm. She would do all four feet, and then she gathers up what she needs to move on to chalking. Yep, it's time for her variety of, well, mayonnaise. And I always will chalk first. She was just bathed, so she was just blown out. So we don't really need a line brush or do anything like that. You can use self rinse. You can pretty much spray them down with anything. Um, but I always, before I put the cholesterol on, I'm always gonna wet the legs down. Cause this is just um, regular water? That is, so it has some bodifier in it. Um, you can use self rinse, you can use water, anything. I just like to get it a little more wet so it's not gonna get clumpy. It's not gonna all stick to one place. Okay, and this is, that cholesterol that we talked about, that amp it This up is the amp it up called. one, okay. And if you look, when I put it in my hands, I mean, it's, you don't want to use too much because this stuff you will, it will be a little stickier than what most people probably want. So you want to be not super overzealous with it like you would a normal cholesterol. And this, I'm gonna go, you can put it on both sides, put it in the hocks, anything like that. Whatever I have left over on my hands, I never waste. And I always like, once again, this, but you can see she's a little low on her shoulder right here. So I'm gonna use the leftover and just kind of rub it in right here. And you don't wanna use a lot of this. The other thing that I will do is I will use normal cholesterol for their face. Now this breed, they are supposed to have an alert, intelligent look, but I come from Shelties and to me, they are still supposed to have an almond shaped eye. This bitch has a very pleasing, pretty eye. But the one thing I will tell you is a lot of these in this breed, we get, some of these dogs get too toy-like. This is te technically supposed to be a miniature Aussie. And we don't want these bulbous eyes looking like, we would want a Chihuahua with a bigger, rounder eye. We want this breed with an almond shaped eye. Now what I do is I will take some cholesterol. Some people will probably disagree with this. I put cholesterol and I'm gonna put it all over her muzzle. I'm gonna get it all in her face and I'm gonna put a little bit more in her ruff. I like the body. Some people will tell you they put it all down. To me, that's preference. Um, and I'll show you exactly why I did the cholesterol in just a minute. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna chalk up her legs. I always have a little brush a little small makeup brush, bristle brush, brush, anything like that to put the chalk in because what you're gonna do is you're gonna pack this chalk in. You're not just gonna, some people just put baby powder in it. Personally, I want to have a little more texture, a little more bone. This breed is supposed to be a moderately boned breed. We're not supposed to be overdone like a lot of these dogs can be, but in my personal opinion, I'd rather have a dog that has too much bone and be overdone and that aspect did not have any bone. Mind you, this breed is a new breed, a newer breed. And we have to pay attention to little things like that. This breed has evolved so much in the last few years, but we still have such a long way to go. And when I'm showing one of these in the ring, 
I want a judge to be able to say, that looks like a mini Aussie. And this is a hard breed. Any new breed is hard to get consistency with. Okay, so you're putting... This is now baby powder. Okay. And this is what I would put in the their ruffs because I want it to look white. This should be a little bit, still should be coarse, but I think it should be a little bit softer. Going back to talking about her expression, okay? I do this with every Merle I show, and I like a soft expression. So I'm gonna take the baby powder and I'm gonna put it in the Merling, just like that. And we will finish it later, but I like to get that in there. Cause to me, the difference in the look and how soft that is, mm -hmm. is so much more pleasing than that harsh look with all this dark color. She is beautiful copper. A lot of them don't. And if she didn't have such a pretty dark copper, I would take some chalk and color it in. Okay. And typically this is just my system to do it. I kind of just start from the back and I see where everything lays. Okay. I would never brush this bitch's middle down. Okay. I would always just fluff it and settle the hair. This bitch is beautiful on her legs. Absolutely beautiful. This is a, I love this bitch. And she has a lot to offer the breed. But the one thing is she runs a lot, which like anybody who has dogs that do dock diving or swim or anything, they build up all of this rear. And you can feel it in this bitch. I mean, feel that oh, in her. Oh yeah, cycles. oh she yeah. She's, a, she's athletic. She's so very, very athletic. It's not exactly bad that she has so much muscle in her rear, but this is one of those things that you have to think, okay, I'm gonna have to build up her top line now. Okay. So now I will go back through and I, I'm gonna trim up her ears. And this bitch, these dogs are supposed to have button or rose ears and they're supposed to be set on the, on the top of their head. Okay. This bitch, there's nothing wrong with the placement of her ear, but she has a little bit longer of an ear in my opinion. Okay. Okay, it goes past the point of her eye. Okay. Which they're a little houndy. But this is another issue that we have in our breed. Okay. I would not throw this dog out because she has a bigger ear. But this, you will rarely see an, a mini with a good ear. They're oh. either too big or they're too small. And they are set like shelties on the top of their head, way too close together. So this, I mean, this is not something, this bitch has a beautiful head. This muzzle is supposed to taper like it does. Even planes, they're supposed to have a predominant stop. Um, this bitch too, a lot of issues in this breed is the lack of underjaw. Would I give her a tinge more underjaw? I would, but she's still tapering. Mm -hmm. So I think this bitch is very pleasing to look at. A lot of judges, and she's easier because she's a Merle, but you have to think the different color eyes can be a problem for some people. Right. Because we can have blue eyed tries in our breed too. Okay. So it's kind of an issue for some judges to get past. Now what I'm gonna do here is on her ear, I'm gonna cut a little bit closer than I typically would on hers because I want the illusion of it to look smaller. These uh, dogs are supposed to have triangular ears. They're not supposed to have rounded ears. This is one of those breeds you can trim to make it look a little bit more in favor of what our breed standard is. So I go around first with curved shears. And it can be, it's going to be a little uneven, and I'll show you exactly why that's okay. Then I'm going to go through, and I'm going to brush this all up. Some people leave more hair. I personally don't. Obviously, if you have a dog that has a horrible ear set or a horrible rose ear, or, and rose ears are not a bad thing, but to me, I prefer a traditional button ear. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to take out all this extra hair right here. Mm -hmm. Just anything that really sticks up. You just go in and take all this away. And then what I do with the actual ear leather is I slicker it up. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to even this all out. Okay. Anything that sticks up and I'm just going to roll it over my finger. And you're just going to even, see how even it gets? Mm -hmm. And you're just going to keep rolling it. Okay, so it's literally being rolled over your mm -hmm. finger. Yep. And then sometimes a tip. You're gonna have to go in and brush it up a little bit too. And then what I do is I look at it and I'll brush it back down. Okay, now I like oh, the way- Oh wow, look at that difference. This looks, but what I'm gonna do 
as you see how it's a little uneven on the round the mm -hmm. edges i'm gonna go in with my thinner and i'm just gonna even this all out here and this is your single-sided um yep thinners? these are a little bit closer together okay um and then i'm gonna come up here do the same thing i'm just gonna even it around the edges here Okay, now the other thing that I like to do, and every dog is different. I don't trim every dog the exact same way. This is just the basics on how I would trim any dog. So you're going to come in. You're going to stop, 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 trim and clean out this ear. Okay. Obviously, if it's a rose ear, a higher set ear, I would leave it alone. All but right. since she doesn't, I'm going to clean all this up in here. That is like, look at that. Amazing. And even this right here, this is the stuff I would get rid of. It, in this, it's still looking a little rounded. Mm -hmm. So I would still go in and clean up some of this down here. And we're going to make it a little bit more to a point. And you want it triangular. You don't want it pointed, but you also don't want it round. Right. So to me. Yeah. There's a large difference. Some people show them like this. Some people liked all that hair. I personally don't. Um, the next thing, which is a very controversial subject in this breed, is whiskers. I, once again, and I will say this till I'm blue in the face, this is the dog show. If you didn't want to do this stuff, you should do something else. You should find <laughs> another discipline. I take the whiskers off. I think it ruins the expression. I know some people will disagree with me. I hate them. I take them off. I tell every client that a dog comes in, you, I hope you're okay with this because I'm not leaving the whiskers on. They grow back if you want them. Um, to me, it doesn't change the way that they do their jobs. So therefore, I'm not really opposed yeah, right. to taking them off. And you're just using the straight? I just use straight yeah. shears. As I will go in and I will clean up this lip line a little bit to make it look a little cleaner. Yep. And just go in right on that lip. And you just want to take the whiskers off. Stop. On the under jaw. Okay. So you don't want to take any of that hair off because you still want her to look like right. she has some under jaw. The next thing I do, which is one of those things I just do that makes me crazy, is I take this hair out of the corners of their eyes. This is that little tiny. The little tiny face trimmers. And this is where I would call being creative comes into play. Each dog is going to be different, and Lexi shared how she's going to accentuate the positives to help keep the spotlight off of, well, other parts. I will brush some of it up, but I like the majority of it down because there's no reason you can't have body here. Right. But it also shouldn't be smooth like a shot. I also will go through, and once that's all dried up, I go through and I'm going to slicker it all up. I'm not going to take that much out of it because I still want some of the chalk in there. But this is when I go back through and I'm going to trim out some of this up here. And you are using... I'm using, Just these it. are my favorite. They're the ones I use on their ears, everything like that. Okay. I think that they are the perfect. And these are the Kenshi or the? the these are the Kenshi shears. Okay. This bitch, I think she has a very tight foot. Okay. And I, I would not do any more than what is Is that what is wanted with the breed? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's supposed to be a tight foot. You can, they're not supposed to be cat-like, um, but they're also not supposed to be splayed, anything like that. They're not supposed to be down on their pasterns. Okay. Um, and I... I know some people don't like to brush all this hair up. Some people don't like all this stuff, but everybody has a preference. Right. So I'll go through, and I do this stuff every day before I show them. And I like to leave a little hair because you want the bone to look like, and every dog is different. You want a, a moderate amount of bone. Right. You don't want too much. Some people will argue and say that there is no such thing as too much. But to me, this gives a perfect appearance. That, and you can even see when I go through right. and I touch it, there's still some there's chalk still, in yeah, you can I didn't put that chalk in there to take it all out. Okay. Some people blow it out. I don't. And I've never been questioned in the ring. And I've never been kicked out of the ring for chalk. So most judges understand this is a dog show. And here are some more fine-tuning tips, this time with your Mars stripping knife. How this just flows. How her back skull just flows. She doesn't drop off here, but everything just flows together, okay? And even right here, you could take a little bit out. So I'll take this, and I'll go in, and I'll just even this out a little bit here, okay? That's all I would do on her, because she already 
has, it all flows together. Okay, so when you put the show leash on her, all you have to do is put it down like that. You don't have all this hair in the way that you're having a brush. It's not a big deal, okay? Now, the next thing I typically do is I look at her front and I come in the front of them and I look and I see, okay, they're supposed to have a well-sprung rib. And this front, she has a very nice front too, but does anything stick out? I personally don't see anything sticking out right here. Sometimes I will go in if they elbow out a little bit and I'll just clean up right along the edges here. Like I said, every dog, in my opinion, should be trimmed According, to, yeah. according, according to, to the their dog, yeah. and what would help them. So I wouldn't touch anything with this bitch unless I would take her down and I'd move her and I'd see that there was something that moved or wasn't in place or whatever. So the next thing I do is then I brush down the top line and I look at her and I think, you know, how is this going to look? To me, she's a little high right here, which we know that. And I'm just going to keep this up. And as you can see, she's pretty level right here. Mm -hmm. She has this one hair that wants to be a little silly. So what I would do is I put a little hairspray in there so you don't have to worry about it. Now this right here. Some people will argue and say you should go in and take out the undercoat. My mom is a beautician. I learned from them. She always comes in. You go against their actual skin. You'd never cut more than twice. And you're going to come in underneath. You're not going to take out that top coat. Okay, and then I'm going to come through here and I'm going to comb this all out and see what I have. We'll never do more than two cuts per, per, yeah. per cut, technically. You don't want to do any more because you don't want to take any more out or any more or any less. So this is supposed to be a medium-sized herding breed. And this dog is supposed to be slightly longer than tall. And to me, this bitch, you could say she's a tad long in the loin. Honestly, that that wouldn't affect me. It wouldn't bother me. She's a bitch. I would prefer that they're actually a little bit longer in the loin if they're going to be longer anywhere. A lot of judges you'll see when they come up, they're going to do like this and look at her. If you put your hand here, she doesn't look long at all. But you want it. They're supposed to have a moderately sloped croup. This croup is not supposed to come off their backs. A lot of people you will see, they trim the croup up here. If you trim the croup a little bit higher, it's going to make your dog look a little bit shorter. In my opinion, I'd rather the croup still properly be moderately sloped off their back, but you're going to trim this hair to shorten her up a little bit. Because if you take your hand and you smooth this hair down, she looks shorter than if this hair is all up. Right. It's pretty much an optical illusion. So what I'll do is I'm going to come in and I'm still going to even out this tail because... And typically, you want their heads forward because everything gets kind of cocked if you don't. And I just come in here, and I'm just going to trim this up. It has not been long since her tail has been trimmed. So it's still moderately sloped off her back. And I'm going to come in, and I'm going to comb all this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chunkers. And I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go one, two, one, two. And I'm going to see what we have after that. And you see how much that that gets rid of. And then if you look at it from the side, look at the difference. Oh, yeah. Okay. It makes her look shorter when you do that. Yep. Now she has all this length and does not look balanced. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and I cut in a V and get rid of some of this. And you, this is with your thin This thin is just with their regular thinners. Okay. You can also come in here with the Mars um, or the Artero right right get some of that out but that is what i would do and then this bitch i would take her down i would move her and i would see what everything looks like once that is done okay now the next thing i do is i'm going to come in and i'm going to slicker up these hocks i was always taught by old time chelsea people you slicker all the way to one side you're going to comb over mm -hmm. you're going to even this side out and then you'll do the same thing to the other side. Now, you'll come over here, and you should be pretty dang even. Sometimes I'll come in and I'll just clean this up again, around the bottom out so everything flows. She doesn't have a ton of hot hair, but you want... This bitch has nice angulation. She has a nice bend of stifle. She's a shorter hawk. 
So many of these dogs have such a long hock, which is not correct, but her angulation matches. And to me, what I'll do is I'm gonna go back in here with my straight shears and I'm just gonna leave it here and I'm gonna cut around it just mm -hmm. like that and just clean everything up again. Because once again, I don't trim everything unless everything is in all the chalk. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. You guessed it. You do the exact same thing on the opposite side and then once you're done there, you're pretty much ready for the ring. This is how I would walk a dog in the show ring. And to me, this bitch, she needs, a, I believe, a point to finish. And she is, she's gotten multiple five-point majors, best of opposite over specials. It's a really nice bitch. She is nice. Mm -hmm. This is a bitch that she'll come in your house and lay on the floor. This breed, I can't say enough good things about them. And it's come a long way. I've probably finished over probably 70 to 100 of these. Wow. Um, in the matter of three years. Wow, so, okay. And I've gotten to know multiple different breeders and it just it's a wonderful little breed for anybody that, you know, maybe an Aussie can be too big for them, too much. Um, this bitch is little. I mean, this bitch is probably 15 and three quarters. I mean, okay. this, is, this would be a great size bitch. Um, and she's easy, she's fun, she's a good girl. So, did you catch all that? A lot of amazing information, right? As in all of these grooming videos, there are so many fabulous techniques that people in any breed can walk away learning something new. So, until next Friday, when my next grooming episode comes out, enjoy! a bitch blowing their coat. <laughs> <laughs> bitch blowing the coat. There we go. You see that? There's me. Yep. So don't wear black.